Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Ellis Carroll. I'm a customer success engineer here at Logi Analytics. And today we're going to be walking through one of the key functionalities of the newly released Composer product. Let's jump into it. Okay, so our main focus for today is understanding uh, a few of the features that fall into the data category, those being derived fields and custom metrics. But before we dive into the explanations, I think it's important to understand what path would lead us to utilize each of these objects. So as content creators, it's often our job to approach requirements strategically, whether to meet a goal or find a specific insight. Uh, the data we connect to Composer is often prepared to provide us with all of the tools to meet those requirements and build visuals. However, there are circumstances where the provided data doesn't answer our questions as is. We may need to extend the functionality of our fields so that we can get better information as we move forward. But how do we do that? Well, we can achieve this by using derived fields and custom metrics. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the derived field. Uh, and the derived field is essentially just a custom field that we're gonna create by extending each row with additional attributes and metrics. And we can use those in filters and aggregations. And we can build them out by performing calculations at the row level. And it allows us to create objects to use later on when building our charts. And what you're seeing on my screen right now is some custom SQL that was written out to pull uh, specific fields from a table. Uh, we're gonna use this as an example. So here, this information you're seeing is all related to shipping data, right? Data for shipping uh, products to, uh, from a warehouse to customers' front door, uh, where those customers live, what country, the city, and so on and so forth. Pretty standard uh, dummy data here. Uh, but in order to better explain or show you how to write fields work, I just wanted to give you a quick view of the data as is. So if we're gonna go ahead and click next to go to our fields page, and you're gonna see all of those same fields here. Now, seeing this, um, as someone who works on the data quite frequently, there are a few things that I'm missing, right? And, and one of those being the ship time, right? I see the arrive date uh, and I see the ship, I think it's ship, uh, there it is, ship date, right? And I wanna find the difference between the two so I can create a, a new field called shipping time or ship time. Um, in order to do that, I'm gonna create a derived field. Now, like I said, this is a custom field that I'm building out to meet a requirement that was provided to me um, by someone else or a requirement to try to find a specific insight that I'm looking for. Now, below, you'll see there are already some derived fields created. I'm going to use one that we've used, which is uh, shipping time. I'm going to click here to show you the expression. So this is one way that you can access uh, these custom fields. Um, if you already have an idea of the custom fields that you'd like to create, you can easily come into the fields tab as you're building out and going through the wizard and create the custom fields that you want to use prior to actually getting into the dashboarding UI. But uh, I think for this, this is a great example. So I'm going to click here and show you what this looks like. And immediately, the first thing you're going to notice is that we're in this editor of sorts, right? And this is the derived field editor. Uh, this allows us to perform some of those row level functions that I mentioned earlier, and we can actually choose uh, the current living attributes and metrics or fields uh, to use in those functions. So I'm using a time diff uh, function at the moment to get the difference of time between the arrive date and the ship date. Now, what you're seeing is a completed version of this, but I just want to show you uh, what it looks like when you actually set this up. So if I was to go to the row level function, and I do time diff, you'll see it actually has uh, some text here for us to fill in what it means to complete this function. Now this is really useful, uh, especially if you're not really comfortable with building out functions or building out calculations. This is a great guide to get you started. So earlier you saw that we wanted to get the difference between the arrival date and the uh, ship time or the, yeah, the ship date. So in order to do that, we need to find that difference. So I'm going to first pull the end time, which is the arrival date, because that's the, the end of the line for our box here. So let me find you, arrive date. Okay, and then the start time, which is going to be the day that it was shipped from our warehouse, is going to be ship date. Okay, and we wanna find the time part in days. So I'm gonna go ahead and Throw some of those and do days. Actually, it might be day there. Let's see, let's run that. And there you go. So you're seeing a, a quick preview of our calculation. And this is actually one way that you can validate that your calculation is working 
Um, if you hit this run button, it'll show you that uh, you know it works. There's a preview. You can move on. But this right here has now become a custom field that I can use in my dashboard and UI later down the road. I don't necessarily have to use it, but if it's something that's a requirement of mine, then I can definitely use it. Now, what's really cool about these two fields is that they're not necessarily um, limited to only being used once, right? You don't, they're not going to be something that you have to build one time and then leave and then never be able to use it again. No, you can actually take this shipping time and nest it within a completely separate field to create an additional field. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes there. I'm gonna show you another one called shipping time over eight. Now, this is a, a great example of some of the other functionalities where we can use case statements in these derived fields. And this case statement is actually nesting a previously made derived field to create a new derived field. And, and that's sort of the power of Composer, right? We don't want you to feel limited when building out some of these visuals, right? We want you to have a lot more control over, you know, what can be used to build. So right now you're seeing this case statement and the shipping time. So this is the same field we just created um, and we've, been, we've been engrossed it within a case statement where it says case when the shipping time is greater than eight, then one, no, zero, if we hit run, there you go. We have our preview and it works. So this is basically saying um, if shipping time is greater than eight, then one, else zero. And we can use that in a true false sense uh, later down the road as well. So if I were to show you what these look like in a library and you want to use them, for example, here's a dashboard that we've created uh, for the Northwind Global Shipping. Uh, and you see here uh, we have some examples, right? So I actually created uh, this late on time derived field to better represent packages based upon the country that they're coming from or going to, uh, whether it was late or on time. And, and this is a derived field, right? You're able to check this out. And I have a case statement using the exact same shipping time where shipping time is greater than eight, then late, else on time. So this gives us a lot more functionality and extends our reach as to what we can actually do within the UI. And you see, you can change this based upon the grouping. Um, and the one we created earlier is actually a number. So I'll show you a little bit later how we can use that to filter and uh, break down things as well. Okay, the next item I want to talk about was the custom metric. Now, custom metrics are similar to the right fields in that they are used to build out more robust metrics that allow us to expand our data reach. We can use these to aggregate data in many different ways, whether it's from an entire source or a selected subset of data. Uh, and because a custom metric represents aggregated data, we must use aggregate functions in order to create a working metric. So I'm actually going to stay on this page here because this is a prime example of using a custom metric. Now, in our data set, there were no percentage metrics available to us, right? So if we look at the source, I'm going to go back here, actually, over here. You'll notice that we have a few items that are based around numbers. Here we go. We have freight and ship via, right? So those are the only two that we have that are our metrics, essentially. But we need to expand on what we can actually do so that we can you know, track a metric against a specific grouping. So if you scroll down here, I've actually created uh, two, but I'm only going to show you one here. So we're going to stay in the shipping realm. I'm going to click Shipping Mist SLA. Now, you'll notice that the custom metric editor is very similar to the derived field editor, but there is an additional drop-down option as well as some information that I think is important for you guys to know. So on the left-hand side, you'll see we have the same uh, row-level functions, but there's a couple of additions in there. But then we also have this function library, right, where we can actually perform aggregate functions. And this is what separates the custom metrics from the derived fields is that we have the ability to use these aggregate functions on a more robust level. Now, in the same way that I was able to nest a previously created field in another derived field, I'm able to do the exact same thing with custom metrics. And you actually see that in my, my operation here in the middle of the screen. I'm creating a shipped miss SLA, basically defining the SLA that a company would wanna track uh, against so they can make sure they're hitting their target. So in order to do that, I've created uh, this, this operation here, basically saying the sum of shipping time over eight, which like we saw earlier was our created field, 
divided by the count of all. This will give us our shipping Mr. Lay time. So if we hit run to validate this works, it's there. Okay. And we close that. And because we want this to be a percentage, we change the format as well. And this is another key piece here. When you're working with uh, custom metrics, you can change the formatting of custom metrics. They're not bound to a specific format. Uh, they fall into the same category as these up here. So just like integer and number, you can change the formatting. Uh, but yeah, so we've created the shipping missed LA and also another one called processing missed LA following the same protocol, right? So if we click here, sorry, let's click here actually. You notice we have the sum of processing time over 10, which is actually another created uh, field that was created by a teammate uh, divided by the count of all, right? So this is how custom metrics work. They just give us that level of, of control to create our own metrics that we like to track by. So if I head back to uh, our dashboard here, you'll see I'm actually utilizing those in my KPIs at the top left, right? So you'll see we have the custom metrics and the processing time or the processing missed SLA and the shipping missed SLA. So you can utilize those once created uh, in any of these visuals that you're using. Uh, and also understand that when we come here to this piece in the sources uh, tab, this is not the only place we can create these derived fields and custom metrics, right? We can actually create them on the dashboarding UI side as well. Same process. If we click the box here, you'll see we can actually add a custom metric right here or a derived field and either one, right? So you can create a derived field and it'll fall into the category of either a number or an attribute or a custom metric and it'll fall into the category of a custom metric. So that is custom metrics and derived fields uh, in a nutshell. They're very powerful. They can become very complex uh, and they can also give you a lot more control over your data and give you better insights into what you're looking for. Um, I'm hoping this was really insightful and, and can get you guys started. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.